आकाशवाणी प्रेजेंट्स मॉर्निंग न्यूज गुड मॉर्निंग आई एम नरेश मागो द हेडलाइंस कंपनीज ऑफर अबाउट 91,000 ऑपरचुनिटीज ऑन प्राइम मिनिस्टर इंटर्नशिप स्कीम पोर्टल रजिस्ट्रेशन ऑफ एप्लीकेंट्स टू कमेंस टुडे नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस वाइस प्रेसिडेंट ओमर अब्दुल्ला स्टेक्स क्लेम टू फॉर्म अ न्यू गवर्नमेंट इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर फेस्टिवल ऑफ विजयादशमी बींग सेलिब्रेटेड अक्रॉस द कंट्री टुडे आई एम डी फोरकास्ट हैवी रेन इन अरुणाचल प्रदेश तमिलनाडु केरला कर्नाटका महाराष्ट्र एंड गुजरात ज्यूरिंग नेक्स्ट फोर डेज एस पेसर जसप्रीत बुमराह नेम्ड वाइस कैप्टन फॉर इंडिया अपकमिंग थ्री मैच टेस्ट सीरीज अगेंस्ट न्यूजीलैंड and in men's cricket third and final t20 international between india and bangladesh to be played today in hyderabad about 91000 internship opportunities have been offered by 193 companies so far on the portal for the prime minister internship scheme The internship portal launched by the government on a pilot basis on the 3rd of this month will be opened for registration by applicants today. The portal was opened for companies to post the opportunities. The government aims to provide 1.25 lakh internship opportunities during financial year 2024-25. It will be implemented through an online portal PM internship dot mca dot gov dot in the total cost of the pilot project will be 800 crore rupees the government aims to provide internships for 1 crore candidates in the age group of 21 to 24 years over a period of 5 years an intern will receive a monthly financial assistance of 5000 rupees for 12 months and a one time grant of 6000 rupees As per the sources, opportunities are available across 737 districts spread over 36 states and union territories. The opportunities are spread across 24 sectors including oil, gas and energy, travel and hospitality, automotive and banking and financial services. Candidates can apply for an internship through the portal from today to the 25th of this month. The duration of the internship will be 12 months. The top companies for this pilot project have been identified on the basis of the average of corporate social responsibility expenditure of the last 3 years. Participation of the companies in this scheme is voluntary. Apart from this any other company bank or financial institution desirous of participating in the scheme may do so with the approval of the Ministry of Corporate Affairs Defence Minister Rajnath Singh will today inaugurate 75 infrastructure projects constructed by the Border Roads Organisation BRO at a cost of 2236 crore rupees During the ceremony which is being organized by the Border Roads Organization in Sikkim the defense minister will inaugurate 22 roads 51 bridges and two other miscellaneous projects These projects have been constructed in 11 border states and union territories of the country including the Andaman and Nicobar Islands Of the 75 new projects 19 are in Jammu and Kashmir 11 in Ladakh 18 in Arunachal Pradesh 9 in Uttarakhand 6 in Sikkim 5 in Himachal Pradesh 2 each in West Bengal and Rajasthan and 1 each in Nagaland Mizoram and Andaman and Nicobar Islands One of the most important projects is the Kupup Sherathang Road in Sikkim which will serve as a crucial link between the Jawaharlal Nehru Marg and Zuluk Axis. It will provide an alternate route for the army to enable the movement of personnel and machinery. With this, the tally of BRO infrastructure projects this year has increased to a whopping 111 worth 3751 crore rupees. Last year 125 BRO infrastructure projects were dedicated to the nation constructed at a cost of 3611 crore rupees 
National Conference Vice President Omar Abdullah has staked claim to form a new government in Jammu and Kashmir. He met Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha at Raj Bhavan in Srinagar yesterday. Our correspondent reports that Mr. Abdullah presented letters of support from the coalition partners including Congress to the Lieutenant Governor. During his meeting with Lieutenant Governor Umar Abdullah presented the letters of support from the coalition partners hours after Congress extended its support to the National Conference. Earlier, Umar Abdullah was unanimously elected as the leader of National Conference Legislature Party on Thursday, paving the way for his second term as the Chief Minister of Jammu and Kashmir. Notably, this would be the first elected government in Jammu and Kashmir following the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A in 2019 and the bifurcation of the erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir into two union territories. Sunil Kohl for Akashwani News from Srinagar. At least 16 people were injured after a passenger train rammed into a stationary goods train at Kavarapettai in Tamil Nadu last night. No casualties have been reported. Following the collision, at least 12 to 13 coaches were derailed. The injured passengers have been moved to nearby hospitals. The incident took place at Kavarapettai near Gumidipundi in the Chennai division of Southern Railway when Mysore Darbhanga Bagmati Express was passing Poneri and the train entered the loop line colliding with a goods train that was standing there. 30 personnel from the National Disaster Response Force, NDRF, are engaged in the relief and rescue operation. Train movement on both sides in the section was affected. Trains passing through Gumidipundi have been diverted through Arakonam. Two trains have been cancelled. Over a thousand passengers are stranded at Chennai's Central Railway Station due to the prevailing situation. General Manager of Southern Railway, R.N. Singh, said normalcy will be restored by today afternoon. Aviation Regulator, the Director General of Civil Aviation, DGCA, has been instructed to conduct a thorough examination of the Air India Express plane that suffered a hydraulic failure while operating from Trichy to Sharjah yesterday. The DGCA will conduct a probe to ascertain the exact cause of the glitch. In a statement, Civil Aviation Minister Ram Mohan Naidu Kinjarapu said, passenger safety is government's top priority and will continue to work closely with all airlines and aviation authorities to ensure the highest standards of safety and comfort in the skies. Last evening, an Air India Express flight made an emergency landing at Tiruchirappalli Airport in Tamil Nadu following a reported hydraulic failure. The crew followed all safety protocols, ensuring the well-being of every passenger during the emergency. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our X handle at AIR News Alerts. The festival of Vijaya Dashmi or the Shara is being celebrated across the country today. The festival is celebrated to remember Lord Ram's victory over Ravan, marking the triumph of good over evil. The day also marks the culmination of Navaratri and Durga Puja. Now we go over live to our correspondent Anupam Mishra who is at Kalibari Temple in New Delhi. Anupam, what latest update do you have for our listeners on the Shara celebrations? Yes, Varesh, uh, we are at uh, New Delhi Kalibadi in the national capital and here the Mahanabhi Puja is now underway. Uh, the five-day-long Durga Puja will end tomorrow with uh, Sindur Khila and the immersion of the idol of Madurga. While many parts of the city is witnessing uh, Durgotsav, Navratra festivities are going on at Sakti Peets in Delhi like uh, Kalkaji Temple, Jandewali Temple and Chhatarpur Katyayani Temple. The Navratri celebrations will come to an end today with special rituals. Curtains will also come down in the uh, nine-day-long uh, Ramlila, which is going on in different parts of the city with Ravan Dahan, burning of effigies of uh, Demon King Ravan today. It symbolizes the victory of uh, good over evil. Naresh. Thank you, Anupam, for that update. President Draupadi Murmu has greeted people on the occasion of Vijaya Dashmi. In her message, the president said that the festival of Vijaya Dashmi marks the victory of justice over injustice. She added that many inspiring stories of dignity, commitment to duty, purity of conduct, humility and courageous struggle for justice are associated with this festival. President Murmu also hopes that this festival of faith and zeal will bring success, prosperity and happiness for all. 
thousands of people from across the country and abroad have converged in Nagpur to participate in the 68th Dhamma Chakra Pravartan Day celebrations at Diksha Bhumi today. More from our correspondent. Dhamma Chakra Pravartan Day is being celebrated each year to mark the historic conversion to Buddhism by Dr. Rambedkar with lakhs of his followers on occasion of Vijaya Dashmi at Diksha Bhumi in Nagpur. The central dome of Diksha Bhumi Stupa is decked up with lights and Panchashil flags to welcome followers in Nagpur who will be paying homage to the central memorial of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. The main function organized by the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Memorial Committee will be held this evening. The district and municipal administration have made elaborate arrangements for followers coming from across the country while railway department is flying special trains for easy committing of followers to Nagpur station. Dhananjay Vankhede, Akashwani News, Nagpur. The India Meteorological Department IMD has forecast heavy rainfall over Arunachal Pradesh, Kerala, Mahe, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, Karaikal, Maharashtra, Gujarat and South Interior Karnataka in the next four days. According to the IMD, light to moderate rainfall is expected over Lakshadweep, Karnataka, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, Tripura and Telangana during this week. The IMD has issued a yellow alert in the eight districts of Kerala today, indicating the possibility of isolated heavy rainfall. The weather office said light to medium rainfall is very likely in the remaining eight districts and in Lakshadweep. World Arthritis Day is being observed today. The objective of the day is to create awareness among the people about rheumatic musculoskeletal disorders and their prevention. The theme of the day this year is informed choices, better outcomes. Talking to Akashwani News, Head of the Department of Rheumatology at Ames, Dr. Uma Kumar highlighted the importance of identification of arthritis to treat it appropriately. She advised the patients and public not to self-diagnose themselves by reading materials from social media platforms. Dr. Kumar highlighted the risk factors like smoking, obesity and also the multiple options for treatment. The best here is that we have multiple options available for treating such patients. First line of treatment is given initially where uh, the drugs are called conventional synthetic demands and then there are biologics and targeted synthetic demands. It's important for the patients and the public to know that they should not self-investigate and self diagnose themselves just by reading some social media platform. That could be very deleterious to them. Moving on to sports news, in men's cricket, India will lock horns with Bangladesh in the third and final T20 International in Hyderabad today. The match will begin at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time. With a 2-0 lead in the three-match series, India will be looking to continue their dominant form and secure a clean sweep against their neighbours. The Board of Control for Cricket in India, BCCI, has announced a 15-member squad for the three-match test series against New Zealand beginning on Wednesday in Bengaluru. The BCCI in a statement said yesterday Rohit Sharma will lead the team. Star pacer Jaspreet Bumra has been named as vice-captain. Mohammad Shami, who suffered an injury during last year's ODI World Cup, has not been selected for the series. And now for a look at today's newspapers. It's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Naresh. Stories about the East Asia Summit in Laos figured prominently on the front pages of newspapers this morning. The Asian Age quotes Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the headline, Solution is development, not war. PM urges global peace. Under the headline, PMO raises alarm over capital's air quality, calls for stubble burning ban. Delhi Tribune reports that the PMO has directed stricter pollution control measures, along with focus on waste and dust control. Mahadev app kingpin held in UAE faces extradition is a front page headline in the Times of India. Rupee weakens below 84 versus the dollar amid FBI sell-off, costlier oil, reports a business standard. Hindustan Times carries a picture of Noel Tata, the half-brother of Ratan Tata, on its front page under the headline, Noel Tata appointed Tata Trust Chairman. A picture in the Indian Express shows an Indian Air Force aircraft making a successful landing at the Nabi Mumbai International Airport, adding that the aircraft is scheduled to begin operations next March. And finally, under the headline, Selling Nostalgia, New Age Ads, Yawn. Brands going retro. The Economic Times writes that consumer companies are reviving iconic taglines and jingles of the 90s to stand out in a crowded market. And with that, it's back to you, Naresh. Thank you, Subhadra. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Companies offer about 91,000 opportunities on Prime Minister Internship Scheme Portal. Registration of applicants to commence today. National Conference Vice President Omar Abdullah stakes claim to form a new government in Jammu and Kashmir. 
festival of Vijayadashmi being celebrated across the country today. IMD forecast heavy rain in Arunachal Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, Maharashtra and Gujarat during next four days. A.S. Pacer Jaspreet Bumrah named Vice Captain for India's upcoming three-match test series against New Zealand and in men's cricket, third and final T20 international between India and Bangladesh to be played today in Hyderabad. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice